You are still watching Ways Now every year around 27th of January, UNESCO pays tribute to the memory of the victims of the Holocaust and reaffirms its unwavering commitment to counter um, racism and other forms of intolerance that may lead to group targeted violence. Uh, anything violence is not for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know how people are able to just like... I don't know. Justify. Justify, yes. Justify violence. Just, violence is, is, is never, is never been. It's never. It's, I don't know how to explain it, but, you know, I tell people that, I've, like, you know how I hear how people used to fight on, in the streets, break bottles? I, I've never done any of such. <laughs> like, literally. I never, ever, I've, like, I've not slapped anybody anywhere. <laughs> Do you understand? I've not fought, like, street fights, you know, this thing. I say, oh, you went, <laughs> you know? <laughs> okay. Not to talk of, you know, full-blown violence. It's not in my blood. Ah, and for I'm some sorry. people, that's the only way. That's the only thing they know. Mm. Violence. And you can't really blame them because, again, that's the only thing they know, like you rightly said. Mm. All right, so Adela, what did you find for us in the news? History will be kind to me, President Buhari says. <laughs> okay, so he said this. Um, he said, going by the situation inherited on security and economy... And the difference that has been made, well, he thinks for a fact that history will be very kind to his administration. I don't know if I agree with that, but let's wait to see what history will say. I mean, in terms of infrastructure, I think, well, they've done well. Some policies, maybe, maybe not the implementation of it, but... So I, I'm yet to get, so I'm yet, yet to understand, <laughs> I'm trying to, try to find my words really nicely. I'm yet to understand how mm. we can get to the point where leaders will think, I mean, will start to just do things and not care what people would say in terms of, okay, I, I want people to say that I was the one. Mm -hmm, no. Mm -hmm. So there is, and that's where we need to get to in Nigeria. Absolutely. We need a blueprint for governance. Mm. So wherever you stop, I mean, it was Government the, gov the Ghanaian yeah. president. He said, whether it is the devil that eventually comes to, to lead mm. this country, you will follow, you would yeah. align. So let's 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 move away from the idea that oh I'll be remembered in history for this I'll be remembered in history for that because again therein lies a lot of the problems that Absolutely. we have because now you see a lot of abandoned projects because we'll be rushed. Pe pe no because people are even waiting to say no 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 I can't touch the project that this one did ah. because it is this person that started it mm. if I finish it it is the person's name that will be on it is, who does it does it matter whose name you know so you've done, if you say you've done well, let your, your work speak for you and all of that. But all this one that people keep on saying, ah, you still will be kind to me. We might not be kind to you. So just <laughs> accept Depends your faith on who is writing yes. the history. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, why are you not <laughs> Just I wish I had something to say on this. <laughs> what I want to say is in my heart, I'll keep it there. <laughs> keep it there, please. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, we didn't take one breaking news, though. Mm. <laughs> um, the tribunal sacking um, Adeleke as governor. We need to just mention it because we'll talk about it probably on Monday because I need to understand. But I hear he's going to the appeal court. Yes. So that he might eventually win the case. Ah, now, wow. But, I we'll mean, miss our dancing governor. Will... Please. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, your story. <laughs> so Kenya pushes one poor per town order to fight alcoholism. So basically the Kenya's um, deputy president has ordered that um, there has to be like a curfew for all entertainment um, centers. So you open by 5 and then you close by 11, basically to deal with alcoholism. So he says here that there are fears directives could see many resort to homemade alcohol, often laced with industrial chemicals. Wow. But then he also mentioned that, um, that, they, that we need to deal with these issues so that to save the next um, generation. And then he, he gave a mandate that said that all regions must not they must not renew any pub licenses that expires so wow. if your pub license expires today that's the end of your pub they will not renew it nothing like that so it is one pub per town so just imagine um lekki for example only lekki you know only be one place where they sell alcohol oh. so the entire lekki no, so let's say, say etiosa 
Mm, uh -huh. wow. Etiosa, for example. They so, VI, their... everyone, you only go to one particular place to get alcohol. So, you're not going to find it. Well, I think I like, like the that. idea. But, but what I'm thinking is, can they expand it in a way that... Wait. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> can you expand it the way that it's a mall? <laughs> so every business yeah. will come like pockets of because yeah. what you have done, you are taking livelihood away, away from, from some, some people. people yeah. I don't know how it's going to work because again, it defeats the purpose. But at least it is one location per region because I cannot even imagine mm. on this street here inside this our clothes, just one pop. Look at how many places we have. You know, not yeah. to talk of. It's not going to work. But I, I get mm. what he's saying. I've been to Kenya. I went to Kenya last year. I've been to Kenya too. And I saw it. What he's talking about? It's a national saw, problem. What? It's a problem. Mm. You think we drink here? Those people? Woo! Mm. God bless them. Well, you know, so you, you work out, let's say the Kenyan way good, are the two different Kenyan Ah, you know what the Kenyan way I know. <laughs> I was, I was because, mad. Hmm. Are you you think, and, and because um, the kind of alcohol they sell there, you know here in, here in Nigeria, when you go to bars and lounges, they even sell like really expensive yeah. ones. Quality. Yeah. They are giving you the access. It's only Nigerians that go there and pop bottles. Or you're buying really expensive whiskey or vodka or something. Those people drink beer. Mm. They just buy their beer and you see like 20 bottles on the table. They are drinking. The person is drunk and gone. The even the, the fact that the part that they even talked about lacing it with chemicals. Yeah. yeah. The one that That's is even scary. So because people are doing their homemade, mm. homemade thing because they also want to make money from it. And that for them to do that is because there is a problem. Because they know that there is an alcohol problem. Yeah, a so lot of people are drinking a lot. The addiction. Hmm. <laughs> After living in the U.S. now for about two years, not just visiting, but living and, change, um, leaving and changing systems, I now see things we managed and let slide is just pure craziness. I am deeply frustrated at the depth and volume of needless suffering Nigerians go through. We are too intelligent a people to suffer like this. Suffering is not lessons to brag about. It's evil. Why must people suffer to get anything done? Why? On that note, we'll take a break. When we come back from the break, we'll speak to our guests as we discuss financial inclusion. Stay with us.